Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to do a quick little review today for Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon. It stars Kate Hudson, Jun Jong Xiao, and Craig Robinson. This is directed by, I hope I can see if I get her name right, Anna Lily Amapur. So, what do I think about this film? This one just came out recently on Blu-ray. I decided to pick it up from Amazon. It was like $14.99. And, because I'd heard good things about it. You know, I actually, you know, heard a few podcasts talking about this one, mentioning, you know, the horror aspects to it. And I think that was kind of, that's, that's what threw me for a loop. Because, is there, are there horror elements to this film? I wouldn't really say it's horror. Not, not, it's not scary at all. There was maybe one scene that's a little bit, you know, gory. But even that is really, really tame compared to, you know, other things that I've seen. But with this particular film, this young lady right here is in a institution for, for children. And, you know, she has, you know, straight jacket on right here. And she just, but there's something more special about this girl. She has the ability to take people over. You know, a little bit like, you know, she can look in their eyes, a little bit like hypnosis. Some people refer to her as like a demon in this film. And like I said, her escape from this institution at the beginning, what she does to the one, you know, the, the, um, the one orderly who's there taking care of her. Well, this girl, the, the orderly who's taking care of her, not the nicest lady in the world. So she kind of gets what she deserves, really. But that's really like the more, you know, the gruesome part of the film, what, what she does to her, which it's, like I said, it's pretty darn tame. So she does escape. And Craig Robinson, he is a uh, police officer. He gets call, you know, he gets his call saying, you know, be on the lookout for this girl who's escaped. She, you know, potentially very dangerous. And, you know, proceed with caution. And he does, of course, come across her. And she is able to stop, you know, stop him from arresting her by taking over his mind and making him do something, you know, to himself and injuring himself. And what does it say exactly what he does? But he does injure himself. And basically the whole rest of the film is him trying to track her down. He's on this case. He wants to, you know, people aren't going to believe him that this girl, you know, took over his mind. Even though we've, you know, he comes across other people who this girl has, you know, come in contact with. You know, she's done the same thing to them. So that's basically his crusade throughout the film is to track her down. He does a pretty darn good job. Usually I'm used to Craig Robinson more in the comedic roles. But he does a pretty darn good job in this film, you know, for what it is as a police officer. Now, she does come across Kate Hudson, who is a, you know, a, um, a dancer, like a stripper. And Kate Hudson realizes this girl has special power. So, of course, she kind of, like, takes advantage of her, you know, letting her pretend that, you know, she's kind of like her friend and everything. And she's able to get her to control the gentleman in the club and, you know, make them throw all their cash at Kate Hudson. So she's able to collect a lot more money. Kate Hudson, not a likable person in this film at all. I haven't seen her really in anything recently. I know she's been in some other films, but nothing recently that I've actually watched. And I thought she was... She's good in the role that she's trying to portray in this film because she's you don't want her to be a likable character. You don't want her to really have any redeeming qualities. And she really doesn't. I mean, there's a little bit of something at the very, very end of the film, which I won't say. But there's just, there's something, you want her to kind of be like scummy. And she basically is. She's kind of like just taking advantage of this girl, knowing that she, you know, she can help her not just control these people, but she's also going to like ATMs and people getting money out the ATM. She's, you know, getting this girl to take over their mind and making them put in their passwords and their PIN numbers so they can get the money out of the ATM. She can just load up on cash. Now, Kate Hudson does have a young boy, um, young son in this film. I would say he's probably about maybe eight to ten years old. And he befriends, you know, Mona Lisa. And she, you know... She sees that this you know, Kate Hudson is not very good to her son, not very nice at all. And the plan is for them to kind of like try to run, you know, run away in this film. So, but you know, things are a little bit twists and turns that do happen at the, you know, towards the end of the film. But I mean, overall, I say it's not. It's a thrill. Like it's, it's, this is this is right here, a demon out of water fairy tale thriller. Yes, there are some thriller aspects to this film. It's definitely not horror. I would not call it a horror at all. Um. So if you do are, are looking at reviews or listening to podcasts or doing reviews about this film and you're listening as a horror, it's not a horror at all. It's straight up, it's, it's more of a thriller or just more about this girl trying to escape and you know people just taking advantage of her for her abilities that she does have. But like I said, Craig Robinson does a really good job. 
Kate Hudson, you know, you know, again, she's scummy in the movie. That's what she wants. You know, you're not supposed to like her character. She does a pretty good, exceptional job of making you not like that character. And karma does come back to bite her in the ass in the film. And, you know, that's something you have to watch to the end of the film to check out. It's not a long film at all. I believe it's only an hour and... It's a little over an hour and a half. And I don't feel, I don't feel like it dragged on. I think visually... I think the film looks okay. The setting of being in uh, New Orleans, I think that works. It helps it definitely. Some of the shots, like when she's starting to control somebody's mind, has like this hypnotic kind of look to it. It works. It's it's kind of effective. Um, but like blown away by the film, I wouldn't say I was blown away by the film. I say more of a middle of the road, check it out once type of film. If you've, if you've heard things about it, if you want to just check out something and, you know, something different that you haven't, you know, you've heard about or, you know, just come across it. Like if you like Kate, Kate Hudson, if you're a fan of Craig Robinson, you know, it's definitely at least worth a watch. Do I feel like it's worth 15 bucks? Probably not. I probably should have waited for it to drop in price a little bit. Um, visually, like I said, visually, it's okay. It's not going to blow you out. It's not going to blow your mind. It's not going to, you know, change anything, you know, perception of how visually, you know, films look. It's standards. It's standard fare. It's like I said, middle of the road. The soundtrack. I have a problem with the soundtrack. I really don't like the soundtrack in this film with the music that they play. You know, I don't mind. They have like, like like techno beats and everything that go on, and I don't mind that. But I just don't think it fit this particular film and certain things that they were trying to accomplish. I just think they felt a little bit out of place with this one. And I haven't seen. I haven't seen any of the uh, directors. Any other, you know, any of her other films, so I can't really base anything, you know, other, you know, other films on, you know, how she uses, you know, music and visual, you know, visual effects, you know, in those other films. But for me, for this one, I saw, you know, like I said, visually standard fare, middle of the road, audio wise, that's where really, the music, yeah, I, I, the music took me out of the film a few times when I did watch it. So just you know, be prepared, and be aware when you do check this one out. I said it's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. It's just not, I don't think it's, it's not a 10 out of 10. For me, it's not a 10 out of 10. I would say it's a good 5 out of 10, you know, at best. And I, you know, again, I'm happy that I at least checked it out, get an idea, you know, for myself. And, you know, I can see why some people probably might like this in the more, you know, some artistic little things here and there. But, you know, it's not a bad film. A 5 out of 10, at least worth one watch. So, that is Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon. And this actress right here, she does pretty good job. I would say she's probably the the shining light of the film. She definitely does an excellent job with what she's working with in this one. So, like, subscribe, and comment if you have a chance, and I will catch you in another episode. Take care.